Good evening, everyone. My name is Thane Rosenbaum. I'm the director of the Forum on Law, Culture, and Society here at NYU. And welcome to the ongoing Folks film series, tonight's film, When God Sleeps. If you're here to watch a, a, a significantly important film, this will, ch this will change you. It'll make you think about human rights in a very different way. It'll make you think about art uh, in our world in a very different way. One of our earlier guests at Folks was Ayan Hirsi Ali. We had her several years ago. When we had her, she said, if you want to stop this, blaspheme more. What is the answer to say if we live in a pluralistic society? Can you just lay off my God? I think this is really not about anybody's particular sacred beliefs. This is about using hatred and intolerance to spread violence against each other. It's about abuse of Islam as a way to concentrate political, economic power in the hands of a few and beat everybody else on the head in the name of Islam. I just want to say, I think what happened was that the Islamic revolution was hijacked. I mean, the revolution was hijacked. It wasn't supposed to be an Islamic revolution. There were intellectuals, there were leftists, there were socialists, there were people who just didn't want to have a king in power, but they wanted a change. So in Iran, religion is being used to deny human dignity to an entire generation, and people like Shahin are fighting it. Mm -hmm. and as he mentions at the end, this is not really about him attacking God or Islam. <laughs> I, I love the line, he says that, I am not enemy of Islam, or I'm not fighting, Is or it's not that I don't like Islam, it's Islam that doesn't like me, or the Islam <laughs> that they claim to represent. But I think what this fatwa does, and it has done, is it's led to a lot of people self-censoring themselves. I mean, that's the real problem. It's not that artists are going to be, not everyone's going to be as brave and provocative as Shaheen, but um, right now in Iran, there are many Shaheens. Um, music, um, you know, hip hop, rock and roll, they're very popular, but um, there's a lot of self-censorship. So you have to, there, there are definitely red lines when it comes to politics, when it comes to religion. So it's a very good film to, to, to tell the international audience about the complexities of Iran, that it is not a black and white society, and let's stop on both sides to use religion or uh, enmity that's propagated for our own political and ideological and geopolitical and imperial you know, design. And I think that maybe there are people in the human rights community that would say, you know, Trump may be a disaster, but this tough talk on Iran might work. There have been sanctions on Iran since, 19, since the early days. I mean, all that happened was that uh, the, the, those who were corrupt in power, the revolutionary guards became stronger, the people became weaker. What did we get? 40 years of sanctions. If you really want exchange between people, let the Iranians come here, let them bring their music here, you go there, you know, mix the cultures. They'll have more, uh, I think, more interaction between the two cultures, and I think good things will happen, because good things have always happened when we did those. The problem that Trump's approach not going to work because it does not differentiate between Iranian people and Iranian government, and it's going to only have the impact of rallying along, er, around the flag if, effectively and making the military in Iran stronger and the Revolutionary Guards. And when it comes to human rights, how can I feel any sense of dignity myself or my community to rally around Trump when he talks about human rights in Iran and not anywhere else. Hmm. And the way that he has been a figure of anti-human rights principles on every other aspect, it's so expedient of him. Didn't you feel afraid while you were making the documentary? Two happens to also be my husband. Uh, um, so we're both married and partners in film. And he and, was in the back of the car. And he was in the back of the car. And he was also living with Shaheen. And so my, and then the day of the concert, and so we were talking all the time, and he was telling me how people were like quitting, this guitarist was quitting, and the next You're saying this quitting. is now part of the story. Right, and, and we were talking, and I said, well, if all these people are quitting, are you going to go to the concert tonight, the Cologne concert? And my producer hat was like, you know, you should probably get the footage. And then, but my wife hat was like, you shouldn't go to this concert. And I think it was a really tough call for him. Do you think 
it's the only the Iranian government that doesn't tolerate artistic expression, but that perhaps it's also the Iranian people. If there were Democrat, true democratic elections, would Shiite fundamentalism still win? Almost everyone in Iran would disagree with Sharia law. They would, they would. They would, they would not want a Sharia law. But at the same time, uh, there is a large segment of the population um, hap that happens to be conservative. I mean, whether it's religious or cultural conservatism. So insulting or maybe portraying the prophet as a penis, uh, they would not call for somebody's killing. They would not issue a fatwa, but they would be offended by it. Uh, they would even go as far as calling for it to be censored. By now, Iranians are at a point where they have made it very clear if there is a free election, what they want is separation of church and state, and each be in its own proper place. That is what Iranians would vote for if they had the freedom. The government of Iran for the past 40 years has dogmatically drilled into the heads of its population a very literalist and dry ideological interpretation of its Shia Islam. And I think the Iranian society is really reaching a point of explosion with each young generation coming up and finding it intolerable. And Shahin is the voice of many in that sense, and that's why he's touching these red buttons, he's saying that nothing is sacred anymore. Breaking the sacred or the taboo has become a civil disobedience movement in Iran. So Iranians want a peaceful transformation of politics where church and state are, or mosque and state are separated. Everything the three of you said so far has been truly enlightening to me. I hadn't heard this and I'm thrilled that you said it here on our stage.